So in my last DC review, I was giving credit to the obscure standalone animated movies in the DC animated movie universe, and how most of the time, they didn't retread the comic storyline. However, I'm not saying that DC's animation department is perfect, and I'm not just talking about Teen Titans Go and DC Superhero Girls. There are some weaker DC movies. Some are okay, like Injustice, Batman Hush, and Justice League Dark, but some are horrible. Teen Titans Judas Contract, Batman the Killing Joke, and Wonder Woman Budlines. The bad ones come in three categories, boring, a complete retread, or it's just completely horrible. Now after the DC animated movie universe aided, it is followed by the Tomorrowverse, and has had a bad reputation. Now I do like the Batman, Superman, World War II, and Green Lantern movie. I found the World War movie okay, and the rest of the movies are boring. I hate these Crisis on Infinite Earth movies, and it doesn't help DC's reputation because of live action DC being absolute shit. I hate it as much as people saying that Superman kills people whenever he's destroying buildings, even though he has x-ray vision to see if someone's in those buildings. However, the movie from the Tomorrowverse I'll be reviewing is Legion of Superheroes, because this movie just shits on Supergirl for no reason. So it wants to play the whole she's destroying so much in a fight because she has no control of her powers card, like in Batman slash Superman Apocalypse. However, in that movie, the destruction and lack of control of her powers was incredibly dangerous and she does pose a natural, genuine threat. So she was sent to Femascara to train with Wonder Woman. And Batman's first interaction with her was her tearing apart Gotham. So how much damage does Supergirl cause in a scene where we and Batman are supposed to be like, whoa, this is so much damage. She is out of control. Um, it's very minimal. Most of the damage in that scene was from Grundy shooting a gun strong enough to knock a Kryptonian to the ground. A little reminder that Supergirl is way more powerful than Superman, so that gun is very powerful. We're supposed to pretend that she doesn't have to dodge a gun so she has a chance to beat him? She breaks a fire hydrant? Oh no, even though Superman, even in this universe, has done way more damage to the city than Supergirl did. In her fight with Grundy, it's showing us that she does have good control of her powers, but it's telling us something different. Show don't tell. So why is Batman trying to say that she doesn't? Batman has always been a logical asshole. He felt the same way in Batman's a Superman Apocalypse. But unlike that movie, Supergirl is not a threat that needs more training, at least from what he saw. She is very capable. Superman thinks that she is very capable. But hearing Batman say that she is dangerous makes her fly away to cry. So Superman has the brilliant idea to just throw her into the fucking future. At least Femascara is in the same timeline where they have an easy access to each other. But the future? Jesus Christ! Also they say that she needs to spend time in the future where the world is more like Krypton so that she can adapt better to the present day Earth. How the fuck does that make any sense? That's not how you adapt. That's a part of this movie that infuriates me. The rest of the movie bores me. When she gets sent to the future, she goes into the school for superheroes with a bunch of characters who make no impression at all. She sees Brainiac 5 and gets into a fight with him, only to be breaking up and learn that Brainiac 5 is actually a good guy. Don't worry though, Superman and Brainiac 5 do one science project and now they are best friends. They even have crushes on each other. That is one of the most unbelievable things in a DC movie. I don't buy the short amount of time with this poor pacing actually causing them to like each other a lot. It goes from hate to friend to crush and not even over a minute. Would you date someone who beat the shit out of you the first time you saw them? There were other things in this movie like the Legion have gone missing, there's a dark circle trying to take over the Legion, and how many people think that Brainiac 5 is going to be like Brainiac, but they don't make any of it interesting. It's just a bore of characters that don't make any impact. There's a whole Disney twist villain thing where we get one character through the first half of the movie and then get a completely different one in the other half. A lot of the movie is filled with high school movie cliches, and it doesn't put a fun twist on them. They just played them out. And we had tons of times where we had these cliches in a future school. Like in many movies in the Tomorrowverse, some of the voice actors and actresses sounded bored to death. None of these characters are interesting, and nothing really demands your attention. Then a fake out death with Supergirl, Triplet Girl, and the real Brainiac, because this movie didn't have enough cliches as it was. What did I like about this movie? The animation and the mother and daughter moment at the start and the end of the movie. Well choreographed fights, Jensen Ackles role as Batman, Brainiac's design, the explanation on why he looks like that, and his official death. So overall I'll give this movie a 1.5 out of 5. The start of it pisses me off and then it just gets boring.